Yeah, we got a little bit of an upside surprise to jobless claims today. Um, it's it's really the you really want to be watching, uh, you know, a multiple week average and not, you know, overtly focusing on one specific week just because you got the outcome you wanted. And the, the labor market is just incredibly, incredibly tight. And that's not going to change no matter what happens tomorrow. It would be hard for me to uh, come up with a number like maybe negative 300,000 or something that would drastically uh, reduce people's expectations for what the Fed wants to and probably has to do. So, you know, barring some kind of crazy downside shock, uh, I don't really see things changing much, um, but that's okay. The first rate hike of this cycle was one month ago this week, and that was a 25 basis point increase by the Fed. And if I had uh, popped onto the show that we, I was probably on that day um, and said we would be openly discussing 6% plus Fed funds rate a year from now, your predictions, everyone on the panel's predictions for where the stock market would be today would probably be 20 or 30% lower than where we are. And so that's the good news. Look at what this stock market has been able to endure um, we, we've gone from zero percent interest rates to now openly debating whether or not six percent is the right number in just 12 months time. And stocks have acted incredibly well in the face of that, along with an earnings picture that's really not great. Um, so the bears will tell you, just you wait and see. The worst is yet to come. Maybe they'll be right. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're in the, the moderate to bullish camp, you have a very big feather in your cap right now. This market has been able to endure the, one of the fastest rate hike cycles, one of the most severe rate hike cycles we've ever seen, and we're still looking pretty okay right now. So, Joe Terranova, I know that you over the last you know, couple of days have been really paying close attention to the divergence between the Russell and, say, the NASDAQ. Now, as I'm asking you this question, of course, the NASDAQ has since gone negative. Um, but nonetheless, the Russell's down about 1%. What do you think the message is? At least what are you so attuned to pay attention to there? It, it's puzzling, but I'm hoping that it's positioning. And I think it falls back upon the way that the consensus was positioning the portfolio coming into 2023. If you look a little bit beyond just the Russell, Scott, You'll see in the last several days the emerging markets, China, they're down significantly. And these are the places that the playbook suggested that you wanted to be. So I'm hoping that this is nothing more than positioning and basically everyone caught on the wrong foot here and not having enough technology, enough communication services. But I think it's worth watching. And I think clearly today uh, it has pulled down the entirety of the market. And you can't just say that it's a result of the concerns that we're seeing in regional banks. It extends beyond that. You have Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, uh, Wells Fargo, all down 4%. Schwab is down 6%. So it's the entirety of the financial sector, and I think it's, it's, it's certainly worth uh, watching. Do you, do you think, Joe, that it, it's recession fear related? I mean, if you get the, the pickup in claims, you can, you know, you can try to build a narrative, OK, that this is, you know, the first building block in place to an environment where, you know, the, the job picture starts to reverse. You have more concerns about a recession in the, in the nearer term, which would be theoretically pretty bad for small cap stocks. Yeah, I think that's part of it for sure. You're not going to get the potential economic recovery that many have suggested in which if you go back to the 1980s shows that from an equity size class perspective it is small caps that lead the market higher uh, i'm not fully convinced though just yet that that's exactly what this is um, I, I listen i'm being very candid i view this as remarkably puzzling given the strength and resiliency that you're seeing in the nasdaq and then this offsetting weakness and it really is not a one-day event. It's something that's been unfolding over the last three days.